Next is my fellow uh, Stanford man. I played tight end. I think he played uh, far right wing on the soccer team, uh, Josh Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thanks to uh, all of the witnesses for being here. Uh, Mr. Baker, Governor Baker, if I could just start with you. I appreciated your comments in your opening statement about the attacks, the terrorist attacks on the state of Israel and the need to condemn those for what they are. Let me ask you about some of the statements that student groups on the campuses of your member schools have said recently. Students at Harvard wrote, they quote, hold the Israeli regime entirely responsible for all unfolding violence. Students at Ohio State University praised, quote, the heroic, heroic <laughs> resistance in Gaza. Students at the University of North Carolina claimed, quote, it is our moral obligation to be in solidarity with the dispossessed. This includes violence. Students at New York University wrote, peaceful discourse must be rejected and instead said there is no peace in a colonized people living under occupation, subjugation, and apartheid, referring to Israel. And finally, I'm sure you know Columbia University. Columbia is actually forced to close its campus when an Israeli student was assaulted and numerous Jewish American students were threatened. Would you condemn this rhetoric of violence and anti-Semitism at these campuses? I think it's important, and I say this as much as a former governor as I say it as the current head of the NCAA, for all of us, whether we agree with someone's general political philosophy or not, to condemn any support for violence. There is never an excuse for unprovoked attacks on innocent people. And I, you know, I've said many times, and I said it a lot when I was a governor, that um, we have gotten really casual about the way we think about violence in this country. Um, and I said it all the way through the summer of 2020 when we had some really horrible things that happened uh, to members of our black community. And I think, the, I, I, think, I think we have a cultural problem there as much as anything else, Senator. And I think it's important for everybody on all sides of the political spectrum to call that stuff out. Good, I agree with you. I'm glad you're willing to say it. I think it's important that the NCAA be willing to say it. You've got many Jewish American athletes, I'm sure, and Jewish American students. Indeed. And while, and I think you were gesturing to this, while the First Amendment certainly protects the right of anybody on our campuses and across the country to say what they want peacefully, peacefully, that doesn't mean that we have to condone it and act as if it's morally acceptable. And I think it's, it's vital that we take a stand. I'm going to ask the Senate to take a stand on the same rhetoric and condemn it as the violent anti-Semitic rhetoric that it is. Let me ask you about a student safety issue of a different kind. Earlier this year, this committee heard testimony from a 12-time All-American swimmer, Riley Gaines. She testified that in March of 2022 at the National Championships where she was swimming, she was forced to share a locker room with a biological male, Leah Thomas. Let me just read from her testimony. In addition to being forced to give up our awards, our titles, and our opportunities, the NCAA forced me and my fellow swimmers to share a locker room with Thomas. Let me be clear, we were not forewarned, we were not asked for our consent, and we, the women, did not give our consent. Is that still NCAA policy? Well, first of all, I'm not going to defend what happened in 2022. Um, I wasn't there. I was still governor of the Commonwealth. What I will say is we have very specific rules and standards around the safety and security of all our student athletes and anyone who hosts one of our national championships has to, know, has to accept that they know what they are and then abide by them accordingly. But, and, and does that include female athletes having to share locker rooms with biological males not being warned or consent? Do they, are they asked for their consent? I don't believe that... Um, I don't believe that policy uh, would be the policy we would use today. C currently not in. in Correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let me just ask you this. Would you support the right of student athletes to unionize? Athletes like 
Ms. Gaines, Ms. Thomas here today to unionize, to have some bargaining power on some kind of an equal footing to deal with the NCAA, whether it's over safety issues like this one, whether it's over name, image, and likeness, whether it's over compensation. It seems like these institutions have all of the power. The NCAA has a lot of power, as we heard from Ms. Gaines. Should student athletes have the right to unionize, to, to be able to speak with a little bit of an equal voice? I think the most important thing for us to remember here is to union, if, if student athletes were to unionize, and we're going to have court cases on that, which is why there's currently two NLRB cases that involve this issue, I'm more likely than not to, to not want to speak specifically to those. I do have concerns, and I've raised these before, about creating a system where you put one brush across all 19,000 teams, all 1,100 schools, all 500,000 athletes, and say they should all be employees, because I do believe in your state and in the state of every single person on this committee, literally thousands of your interscholastic athletic programs will go away because it completely changes everything about what it means to be a student athlete and what it means to be a college that supports student athletics. And I think that's a, that's a problem. Well, I appreciate uh, your responses and your candor. Um, I will just say in conclusion that uh, I think we've got to find some way to give these student athletes a voice. And whether it's the issues like the ones Ms. Gaines raised or NIL issues or others, currently I think there's a huge power disparity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did, can, can I just make one final point, Senator, which is all three of our student athlete advisory councils, which are elected by their peers, have expressed deep concerns about being considered to be employees. And I've talked to probably a 1,000 student athletes since I got this job, and I haven't talked to one yet who wants to be an employee. I think that's important. Senator Blackburn. 